The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Our next speaker is Tim Collins. Tim, Tim is a senior technical service engineer with Folsom U.S. in Canton, Mississippi, and he's going to talk to us about the use of laboratory paste mixtures as a concrete mix design tool. Thanks, Kevin. I realize we're a few minutes behind schedule. I'll see if I can do my part to catch us back up. Uh, the uh, subject matter of my presentation is uh, something that we are, are promoting for uh, the use in mix design uh, preliminary proportioning as a uh, as a tool for uh, for avoiding what would otherwise be quite a number of concrete mixtures along the way. You know, concrete has gotten increasingly complex, particularly today when we get into uh, mixtures that have very high cementitious uh, cement replacement with supplementary cementitious materials, multiple materials, multiple admixtures, and particularly when we run into the needs for, for uh, performance for the contractor to be able to be successful, particularly uh, uh, setting time, early strength development trends. Um, there may be not just dozens, there may be hundreds of permutations of combinations that are possible. And we need to evaluate many of those uh, in order to optimize the, uh, the mix design for these complex situations. And this tool is, is uh, something that's useful, as we found, for, for that purpose. Um, <clears throat> by definition, we understand that paste is the combination of cementitious powder materials plus water and admixture. And of course, concrete becomes paste with the addition of aggregates. So it might follow that, is it possible to do preliminary screening of the cementitious materials, admixtures, and water uh, without the aggregates, and that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So the premise is that the setting trends and the early strength development trends of paste made in the laboratory in very small, simple batches is um, compare so well to that of concrete that we can use this tool as a preliminary optimization tool for very complex sets of materials. Um, and we use this to, um, uh, to experiment one change at a time with a very large number of, of batches. And it, it follows that it may even be possible for a particular set of materials to begin to predict concrete performance. Now we'll take a look at, at that possibility here shortly. Um, this is also very useful if you have materials that you're concerned about the potential for incompatibility behavior. Uh, it, it's arguably the the easiest way to possibly evaluate that. And the big advantage is that you can do a lot of these mixes in the same time that you could do just a handful of concrete mixes. The approach is to take small batches of laboratory paste that can be very simply uh, proportioned in batch. And we document not only the strength development of those paste batches, but also the setting time. And we generally do this with passive technology not using penetrometer type testing, but we use uh, thermal methods for evaluating strength development. And to give you a little bit of a feel for how the, the time and resource requirements compare, uh, we, we can do dozen of these, dozens of these in a single morning and have the results generally the next day, particularly overnight strengths, uh, setting times. Uh, the equipment costs are very mo uh, modest. And, uh, once you get set up for this with little software and so forth, it really is, is a very uh, a 
a low commitment uh, type of, of exercise. There are no ASTM standards in current existence for uh, governing this, but there are some that are on the uh, uh, getting very close to um, to fruition in ASTM that will be useful in, in supporting this procedure. Now, just <clears throat> for some pictures of what we do in the laboratory in this regard, here's some of the equipment. Uh, half the stuff we use we buy at Walmart. It's not expensive equipment. Uh, the, the afternoon before, we're going to do some paste batches. We actually pr uh, weigh up all the powder combinations in individual little Tupperware type containers. And you see, when we start the process of mixes, we'll empty the powder into a mixing bowl. Uh, gray haired technician there is, is, is actually weighing up the batch water uh, one mix at a time. And we use these medical type syringes to inject the, uh, the chemical admixtures into each uh, uh, weighed up batch water. We pour it together, we use a $10 Walmart kitchen mixer to mix the paste. Now you could mix paste using standard methods, C305 type mixing, but that mixing is really designed for, for uh, uh, you know, stiff paste that are used for VICAP and those kinds of tests. Not very useful for this. This is way better if you're using realistic concrete water cementitious ratios because that paste becomes fluid and pourable, which is very useful in the process. We pour it up into two by four cylinders. We document the thermal profiles overnight. The next day, we'll take one of the cylinders in each case and do a, a compressive test, uh, sort of a modified C39 type test. And for, with two technicians working, we typically do a mix about every four to five minutes, which means in a, in a span of a pretty easy morning, you got four dozen mixes under your belt. <laughs> there are some variations in the equipment. There's actually some commercially uh, manufactured devices that are related to this, the uh, ADACAL type uh, device um, that can document thermal profiles for mortar and for concrete. But we've evolved a little bit over the years. We initially started this with probe type thermocouples. What we're actually using now are uh, sim simple blocks with uh, uh, twisted wire solder tip uh, thermocouples. Uh, you can also use thermistor type temperature sensors that are in a foam block uh, exposed to the bottom of a two before cylinder that's isolated from the air with a thin layer of, of insulation with a two inch cutout. Uh, you can actually use a simulated uh, field temperature environment in a laboratory thermal cabinet or, or a uh, water bath type curing tank. And, and here's what the data collection looks like when we're doing a lot of this at once. Um, the thermal profile, which most everyone is probably familiar with, looks something like that from, from changing temperatures of these materials over time. And in order to evaluate the setting trends of different changes one mix to the next, we compare the relative timing of what's happening in the main peak of hydration, which is responsible, uh, which is uh, contributed by uh, primarily tricalcium silicate hydration. And you'll, you'll hear uh, the term fraction. There'll be a certain fraction of the main peak that might be used to, for evaluation. A convenient one to use is 50% of this thermal bias. If you're trying to actually replicate concrete initial setting times, you, you could probably do that if you're willing to go through a little bit of, of uh, a fine tuning on the front end calibration, if you will. And, and that number would probably be something in the range of about 20% of that thermal rise. We, we typically use 50% because it really doesn't matter and that's a, a convenient one to use. And here's some applications. Different paste mixtures with different admixture combinations and dosage rates to evaluate the retardation effects of those individual changes. And as it turns out, the uh, hydration time differential, one mix to the next, is very, very close to what happens with initial setting times in parallel concrete mixtures. Just add the aggregates, put up the concrete mixtures, and do the penetrometer setting times. And you get different numbers, but the change from one mix to the next turns out to be very, very close to this. Here's some actual data in that regard. We took some concrete mixtures with, with different suites of admixture combinations and cementitious combinations, some C-ash, some F-ash, a ternary mix with some slag and C-ash, different types of admixtures. And we put up concretes, uh, ordinary type concretes that you would see in, in low-tech construction, and the, the uh, initial set 
C403 initial set times, setting times for the concrete mixtures are the solid bars in each case. We took the, the same proportions of the paste fraction of those concrete mixtures, put them up in the laboratory, did the thermal profiles in the 50% fraction setting times, and that's the striped bar in each case. And you see that the, the numbers are different, but the trends are the same, and that's the important take home here. <coughs> Now, I've got another set of data in which I'm going to do the same comparisons now, not only for the setting times by the thermal profiles, but also the strength trends from the paste itself, uh, both at, in this case at one day and at seven days. Most of the time we're more concerned about the early strengths when we're trying to replicate for performance for uh, concrete on the project. Here again we put up, and, and this was a case in which we were studying some, the effects of some Portland limestone cements as compared with ordinary Portland cements from the same plants and typical mixtures that you might use on a, a, a bridge deck or a, a you know, pavement slab, whatever it is, some, some sea ash, some F ash, and some slag mixes. And uh, ordinary Portland cements, Portland limestone cements, in this case the, the uh, first bar, the shorter one, is the initial setting time, C403 initial set of concrete penetrometer, and the solid bars are the uh, 50 percent thermal fraction uh, setting indication for the parallel paste mixtures in the laboratory. Again, you see all the same trends. Um, we we um, uh, find that information, uh, if you were wanting to calibrate that information for the initial setting times, again, you could use a, a fraction much lower than 50 percent and probably do a pretty decent job of predicting that concrete setting time. Here's what the, the strengths look like. Uh, one day strengths here, seven day strengths here, comparing the, uh, the concrete one day strength versus the paste one day strength. And the fact that these happen to be fairly close is really irrelevant for our purposes. That happens to be the case that this particular water cementitious ratio might not be for a different one. But the important thing is that the trends are quite the same. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look, if you just study the green bars, the concrete, to get your, your concrete trends, and you, then you look at the, the blue bars, the paste strengths. What we typically see, and this is true for setting times as well as strengths, is that the trends are slightly exaggerated in the case of laboratory paste relative to concrete. That's actually a good thing because it's very easy to pick up those trends as you do this work. But the trends tend to be quite consistent and very usable. So in a couple of days, you can literally screen materials and use proportion, preliminary proportion uh, uh, things that, that are learned to eliminate what would otherwise have been dozens if not hundreds of concrete mixtures to optimize a set of proportions. Get a few that, you, that look really promising and then take it to concrete uh, mix uh, preparation in the laboratory. Um, just an example, and I won't spend any time with this data, I've shown this in other presentations some of you probably have seen, but an example application of using this in the development of a complex mix design and for this hypothetical situation, here are our objectives. We're going to um, try to, to produce a mix design with 50% total, total, total cement replacement with a single SCM. We have some different SCMs that we can evaluate for using in this, but in, in what we want to accomplish is the uh, setting time trends and the early strength trends that would essentially replicate those of ordinary tried and true concrete mixes that we use for flat work every day. So we're going to need to balance the use of some, some admixtures in uh, recapturing some of the performance that's uh, moderated by these high SCM contents. So that's a, a fairly complex mix uh, challenge, even though the mix design itself won't contain but one SCM material. Now, one of the things that we do on the front end <coughs> that uh, may be particularly useful is to evaluate different candidate materials for their potential to uh, misbehave, uh, incompatibility, if you will. And to do this, you don't necessarily have to replicate the concrete mix design that you're interested in, but you might take an aggressive set of proportions that you might have experience with, maybe even experience some issues with in the field, and subject your different SCMs to different replacement rates to see how they compare. And this is just an example of that. Thermal profiles and one-day strengths in the bar charts and what we see in the case of this class F fly ash is nothing but pretty much the dilution type effects that we typically see through about 40% replacement. No, no 
tendency to misbehave. Slag cement or GGBFS, uh, we can actually get on up to 50%, maybe even greater, with this aggressive admixture dose at a higher temperature and still have no particular issues with misbehavior. Sea ash, not so much the same. By the time we get about a little past 25%, you see the shapes of those profiles are now beginning to change. And for those with experience in reading thermal profiles, that's an indication of some problematic potential. And then the strengths are an indication, as we see here, that uh, misbehavior, uh, incompatibility is going to be a potential issue in the sea ash. But go back to the objectives. What we really want to do is try to develop this mix design. Now that we, we know there might be some issues with the sea ash, that's something for us to watch in the process. The first stage of such a process that we would suggest is to take the traditional mix designs that we're used to, and that might be a 15 or 20 percent fly ash mix with a, with a mild uh, uh, lignin-based uh, water reducer or something like that, and to establish the, the uh, trends for both early pace strength and pace thermal profile setting indication. And so to do that, we've taken three such mixes. We've established a, a setting time band there. You see the little shaded band. And the same thing in the one day strengths, a, a setting time or a, a strength uh, uh, objective, if you will, for our design mix to be designed. <clears throat> Later on, since our objectives are to make this a 50% cement replacement mix, what happens when you do nothing but change the cementitious uh, uh, mixture to where you have 50% total cement replacement? And obviously, in, uh, particularly in the case of a mix with a, um, with a type A, D, or a, a, a common lignin type admixture, the, that goes along. In the case of the polycarboxylate admixture with the F-ash is, is still hanging in there on the setting time. But now our C-ash mix is beginning to, to produce setting time issues uh, that we, we're going to have to watch in this process. Obviously, our one-day strengths are all well below the target band now. So what we want to do is to recapture the one-day strengths, probably is the next step in this process. We do that by lowering the water cementitious ratio, the use of high-range water reducers, and where, wherever it takes to get to the, uh, just into the entry level of our target band, now we are seeing some additional retardation from the effects of those chemical admixtures. It's true in almost every case when you're using water reducers. So now we have to accelerate the setting time to get it back, more replicate mixtures. <clears throat> and as we put the particular, in this case, a non-chloride accelerator, a very similar to the uh, uh, corrosion in here that was being used in the, in the previous uh, presentation, and we're, we're successful in restoring some of the, uh, getting our set times back into the target band in many cases, except in the case of the sea ash, which is the problem actor. And as we increase the accelerator dosage, we're beginning to see some misshapen curves. We're not regaining much one-day strengths. One-day strengths are, not, are, are increasing as we accelerate the other ones. So now we are sure enough seeing some misbehavior with the sea ash mix. If we have questions about that and we want to uh, uh, verify for our own benefit that this is a, a, a true incompatibility uh, issue, which is sulfate balance related, then we can actually take the sea ash mix and begin to doctor it with sulfate additions. And sure enough, when you do that, you restore normal performance. The strengths begin to rise again. So that confirms to us that yes, indeed, that was a problem um, sulfate balance incompatibility for the sea ash. So this tells us that for a 50% replacement with this admixture suite at these temperatures, the sea ash is not going to be a candidate for us. You might could retune that to a 35 or 40% mix or something like that. But then we need to take the mix to our ultimate high concrete field temperatures to see what the performance is going to be in the field on the project. And now we can verify that both in the case of the F ash or the slag mix, you can use either one of those. One day strengths are ample by the time you do that. We can actually begin to back off on the non-chloride accelerator. So that's just an example of how this process might work. Uh, we find the, uh, uh, the procedure to be very useful in eliminating a lot of work that would otherwise require many, many concrete mixtures. And when you have a, a, a few of these mixtures that are promising, then it's time to go to the concrete lab.
and put the aggregates back in the mix. Thank you. Questions? Okay.